voice versus text. You know, so we've just been talking about some of the advantages of, of text for chatbots, and there was something for voice. What's do we need both? What's the you know the pros and cons of each? Where is it? Is it a case of the right one for the right situation, or and and should things be be available on both channels? Are there are there some things where I might want to be able to let the user have exactly the same experience on voice and text, or not? I think some of the examples that Oscar was saying earlier, like if recipes or, or you're walking in from from your car, like you've got your your hands are full with shopping bags. Um, I mean, it, that that by far needs to be voice, like without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I think there are certainly other contexts where, well, sometimes when you need a screen for feedback or screen for information, um, where voice has issues, um, but uh, yeah, context is definitely important. Yeah, I think one thing that's really important to remember as well is that um, voice and, and, and text chat are very, very different. Um, we see a lot of companies that have maybe built a uh, chatbot for Facebook Messenger and want to then move that over to Amazon Alexa, thinking that it will be a very simple process and we can just literally port it and it doesn't work at all. And the same in the other way around, if you, we see companies that have an Alexa app and they want to port that over to Facebook Messenger and you really have to be careful doing that. You have to think about the context, um, as Sid said. I would say one thing where I do think eventually people and brands will need to be on both the chat platforms and voice because people want to have that flexibility. One thing that we talk a lot about is um, the driving use case. So um, Ford, BMW and VW have all announced that they're bringing um, Alexa into their new car models and you're seeing um, other car companies follow with the other digital assistants. And I think driving is actually going to be like a really, really big use case for, for voice going forward. Um, but but having said that, you can definitely see the use case where, you know, you're in your car, you're driving to work, you're interacting with your digital assistant there. And then as you get out of the car and you're walking maybe the next five minutes into the office, you continue that through Facebook Messenger. So I think you definitely have to think about both. But as Sid said, they're, they're very, very different and you have to think about the context. One of the challenges, I think, with voice at the moment is if if you get into the weeds of actually designing a system in voice, sometimes there are unexpected problems and hurdles that are very difficult to overcome with the current technology. So, for example, we built very recently uh, an application with a company called Beezy, and they are uh, an organization which tries to extract information from from company from about their business. And so the, the, the use case is that the users in their car and they're using their iPhone and they're using the BZ application and they record on, they, they, uh, they activate with Siri and they say, um, have we ever worked with Shell before? As in the, the oil company or whatever. And um, we got that working pretty simply and it was quite straightforward to, to figure out the intent and, and recognize the company Shell. But then they were asking questions like, have we ever worked with the company Misco before? A MISCO is actually not a very common word that's being used in the regular English language. It's very specific to that domain or, you know, any company name. And so most of the voice systems are trained against general English. They're not trained against specific companies or their, their domain specific language. Another example is um, I recently worked on a, a, bot, a voice bot for Plexus Law. And Plexus Law have lots of legalized, lots of legal English that they use inside of their dictations. And so, for example, they were saying they were asking about a claimant. And most of the um, regular speech services were returning, instead of saying claimant, they were re referring that as, as Clementine, like the orange. And obviously, that then becomes really difficult to make any understanding of what the user actually wanted. So we've done a lot. We've done a lot of research in our company on what we call custom speech recognition, which is like current speech technology, but where you can feed it with reams of sort of domain specific language, so it can be more and more accurate. And I think all of these scenarios around car in car or uh, I'm not dead and say Alexa again in case she pops up, um, but the okay. Amazon based uh, chat assistants and, and various things, they're all based around generalized speech patterns and. I think if we want these things to really take off, we're going to need domain specific language understanding into these, these, these systems as well, per app, perhaps domain specific language understanding. Yeah. So, so the way I've deployed the, the device you deploy in your office for, or, you know, and maybe it's even the, the different assistants, isn't it? I, mean, I, I keep thinking, especially with the voice thing, that the idea that you have this one device that has Alexa in it, but actually 
I might want to have several different since so I have Alexa might be how I manage my home. So I have all my smart home and shopping and domestic kind of stuff in there. And then I have a completely different assistant with a completely different name, which is how I handle my business stuff called a money penny or something. And, and, and that kind of idea that we say, I want to talk to this one. And then that puts us into a domain, just like we open our work email or we open our personal email or, you know, pe- people have different, different personas, different hats, don't they? Yeah. I think one of the, well, the challenges maybe with the uh, the Amazon one at the moment is that if you speak to that as the developer, you don't get access to the the actual what they said, the WAV file. And, and the same with our, our Cortana implement, her implementation is that you don't get access to what the WAV file is. So you have to rely on their speech to text text. So most of where we're doing more advanced speech to text systems, we're having to actually build that into apps ourselves rather than using these um, voice assistants. And I think that's that's a, a challenge which these large voice assistants or personal assistants are going to have to overcome somehow. We're going to have to give developers access to the web files, to the, the actual audio. Okay.